There's a camera on the helmet. There's a camera on the bike. And I'm gonna be riding a motorcycle. Does any of that sound easy to mix together? Let's get on a bike and talk about it. I think they have a problem with their water hose. <laughs> what the heck is that? And as hopefully you can see there, it's 100 degrees out. Said 101 on the main road. And I am not talking about danger of motorcycling or any of that stuff today, but welcome back to the channel, my friend. This is Road Reality, and we're gonna talk about motovlogging again, because it's really been on my mind a lot, but I think, and I'm gonna put this out there, that motovlogging is the hardest niche on YouTube to succeed at. And not for the reasons you're thinking, but the technical hurdles that are um, yeah, the, the, oh gosh, the temperature is just kicking my butt. Anyway, the technical hurdles that are inherent. Ah, words, we have words. The inherent technical difficulties with actually creating a motovlog video. So there's some things that you really need to know about video and YouTube in order to uh, get this conversation underway. But first, some iced coffee because it is so gosh darn hot out. Ah, coffee, 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 coffee. Also, how you doing? Are you having a great day? Leave me a comment below with how your day is going. I am having a swimmingly good day. Mostly I'm swimming in my clothes because I was outside for five minutes and now I'm a big old hot sweaty mess. Anyway, TMI moving on. We're having a good day. Where do we start? Well, we have to start with a little bit of understanding. See, a video file is literally just the first frame and then every difference in every frame thereafter. So my hand is up here now, and as it moves to the side, and okay, just pull out in front of me, sure. All the computer is storing or camera is storing is the difference between where something was and where it is now via pixels, okay? Little tiny ones and zeros. Don't have to know what a pixel is, just know it's a one or a zero, yada, yada, moving on. Got to simplify it a little bit or this video will be an hour long tutorial. But what it leaves you with is a file that is not nearly as big as it could have been if you stored every pixel from every image, from every frame, all the way through your video. Nobody wants or needs that and viewers will not be able to stream it. So the next thing up is the codec and that is the algorithm that is used to create the video file and store it and it is lossy, meaning you lose a little bit of data. And every time you render a video and you've taken it in as source, it gets worse, like a Xerox, you know, for those of us of a certain age who need an aspirin and a nap. But I digress. When YouTube takes your file after you've uploaded it and they process it, they apply even harsher compression. So for instance, these trees that I'm riding past right now do not have as much detail as they could. But when I flip the view back to me, I look, well, I'm, I'm in the shadow, but you can clearly see the data that is in my person in the video because I'm not moving that much. So YouTube's way of compressing things doesn't screw that up a whole lot. So now we have a primer, a guidebook, if you will, on how that all works. So there's three parts of every YouTube video. It is the audio, the video, and the content and we've gone over the video. Next is your audio. Most people, when they're vlogging, are either walking or they're stationary, etc. They're not moving fast. Even if they're in a bar, it's kind of a crowded environment. You can still hear them. Wind noise is the biggest issue with motovlog audio. And I will be surprised if I don't overheat either camera today. Like it says 99 right now but it was 101 earlier, 100 in the shade a little bit. I'm just gonna let them run. Oh, green light. So you take your microphone, you put it in your helmet, and if you have a full face, your job is easier, but not that much easier. I have some friends with full face helmets and their audio ain't as good as mine because I don't have all the vents and the shape of the helmet to wreak havoc on my audio. I just have wind noise and engine noise, which I dial down with plugins. I've done plenty of reviews, go look at the channel. But really you have this problem of the audio, the extraneous noise that a lot of other genres of YouTube don't have. Now, if you've got super high production quality, you've got the world's best dead cat, you've got a studio to record in, 
I just got to side gust the wind and I'm just like, yep, let's go. And there's, there's a subset of YouTube viewers that really enjoy the raw nature of audio. They want to hear the ambient noise and all that. I do too, to a certain extent, which is why I minimize it in my own videos. I try to keep the cleanest audio I can with a little bit of engine noise. Listen. Yeah, I can make it sound pretty good, right? Yeah, I can make it sound pretty good, right? But those two things make motovlogs very difficult to produce because like right now, you're going to see really good detail in all these trees and stuff because I'm not moving. They're not moving much. You're going to see all that detail. When you see somebody at the beach or whatever, then you're going to see quite a bit of detail. They're not moving around a ton. And also you have uh, like the snowboarders and the skiers. Well, that's a lot of white and blue, not respectively. And when you have a lot of the same color, it means that the video compression doesn't have to do as much of a uh, harsh job. But here we've got a mix of browns and greens and the cars and everything's moving. So it all takes bandwidth. And YouTube only allows you so much bandwidth. And it's a data rate, technical terms, yada, yada, yada. Just trust me when I say, if you look at motovlog videos and then you look at other genres of video on YouTube, it's usually not as clear. So why does that uh, why does that come into play after the video has been uploaded? What turns people off from that? Well, a lot of people equate video quality with the production quality. And to a certain extent, that is correct. Your production quality drives it. Like the intro to this video, when I recorded it, it's on my Sony and it had a really high bit rate because it's 4K on a dedicated sensor camera deal. It's not an action cam or any of that. And it's just going to give me the best quality I can get. Ah, the best copy I can get. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, when you've got the action camera, they tend to not record the details as well. Some of the newer ones are getting there. And if you record it 4K, you're going to get way more detail. Stay over there than you would in uh, 2.7K or 1080. And I still see a lot of motor vloggers recording in 1080. Guys, step it up. Gals, step it up. 2.7K or bust. That's the bare minimum, should be anyway. It's 2024 now, people. So you really need a certain level of production quality to draw a viewer in. I'm not even gonna talk about the actual content of the video because there are some topics that do well, some that don't. Some people just don't like watching people ride around on a motorbike. As compelling as I may be talking about a GoPro while I ride my motorbike, there's just the, the vast majority of people don't wanna see that. They want the per they want blah, 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 they want the professionally produced GoPro sourced commercial spliced in with what somebody like me, a so-called expert, other people's words, not my own, has to say about GoPro. I totally understand it. It's not my jam generally. I would much rather show you moving around, especially uh, when I'm actually moving and not at a stoplight. Skip, if we still haven't even gotten to the worst part of trying to make a motor vlog. <laughs> That's the actual motorcycling bit. I have touched on it, but let's touch on it some more. Ooh, those clouds look like they're gonna rain. I could use a cool off. Well, let's get down to brass tacks, my friend. If you're riding a motorbike, that takes a lot of physical and mental capacity to be able to handle, right? Maybe not a ton of physical, but definitely the mental part. You definitely want to be paying attention to your surroundings and operating the motorbike in a completely safe fashion like I am right now, looking at you, doing what I do. Anyway, you do need that. So it causes your brain to divide things up, which is why I lose my train of thought all the time because my brain is like, don't fall on your head, John. Do the motor vlog thing later. Oh. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice and easy. By the way, if you got this far in the video, you're obviously a subscriber already. If you haven't, boop the like button, hit the subscribe thing, hit the share button, hit the bell icon, hit all the buttons. Dear old buddy John, a solid.
But if you are a subscriber, you watched my last video, uh, you, you know, I was talking about a little bit of pain in my left foot. It turned into that night, I kid you not, a full-fledged flare-up of the gout, and it has had me laid up all week. It has not been fun. I have just now been able to walk with some semblance of normalcy. So yay for me for not sitting around and waiting for it to get better and then having to rush to ER or urgent care and get meds. I went to my doc straight away and I got the meds to make it better. They kicked in, they, they brought it down to a dull roar. Anyway, so where does that leave us? That leaves us with a lot of testing your gear to make sure it gives you the audio and video quality that you're looking for. And I keep getting stuck at these damn red lights. So we're just gonna wrap this one up, all right? And you've got to do all this testing and you've got to make sure everything's working and the lighting's a pain in the ass because you're always like riding in the wrong direction or it's cloudy, not cloudy, etc. It's just really a pain in the tuchus. So that is why I say that motovlogging is the hardest niche to succeed or get good at on YouTube. If you feel like disagreeing with me or agreeing with me, that's great too. Do so in the comments section below. This has been a lot of fun. I love talking about this stuff because I spend a lot of time thinking about this stuff and this stuff being YouTube and motovlogging in general. So I like to uh, I like to hone my craft, make it better. I've got the audio dialed in with the plugins. I got the video dialed in by having some of the latest gear and I just have a lot of fun at it. And then I try to edit this stuff the best I can so people might watch. I know it's it's a narcissistic thing to do where I want other people to look at me. You're looking at me right now. Hello. And that, folks, is going to be that. I do thank you for watching. If there's anything I forgot, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there's a wrap of things <laughs> that I forgot to talk about. So do be kind and let me know. But I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget two mantras and go watch this video over there. I don't know. One, you have a 100% track record of making it through a bad day. And two, do something nice for yourself every day. I'm going to go get a sandwich at Jimmy John. Oh, and the camera's never overheated. Bye.